Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture on case studies. This lecture is part of your paper on communication research, part 1, introduction. In this module, you will learn about the case study as a research method and different phases of case study research. A case study is a research method used to explore and examine the events that occur in the life of an individual or a group. Now the question is, what is a case? A case can be defined as an event or an incident that occurs either in the life of an individual, within a group, a larger community, an organization or any other entity. Studying how and why these events or the incidents occurred through the use of multiple evidences collected from the field site can be called as case study. Though the origin of case study method can be traced from the works of Frederick Lipley conducted in 1829 concerning managing family budgets. However, the method got recognition due to its widespread use in psychology, medical and legal studies. Psychologists and medical practitioners employed it for their understanding of the patient's case history and the subsequent changes. Legal practitioner employed this method to understand a particular criminal case. Such practical use of the method attracted researchers from other fields who used this method in understanding occurrences in their natural settings. Today, the method has broadened its scope and is used in communication studies, management, economics, education, etc. In all these fields, researchers use the case study method to understand complex social phenomena. According to Sturman, 1997, case study is a general term for the exploration of an individual, group or phenomena. Simons in 2009 said, critically reviewed various existing definitions of case study as a method. Based on his review, Simpson's 2009 defined case study as an in-depth exploration from multiple perspectives of the complexity and uniqueness of a particular project, policy, institution, program or system in a real life. Case studies are a powerful tool because through this method of research, the researcher goes deep in the case, looks at it through various lenses to provide the context, historical background and meanings of the different events connected to the case. Unlike the other methods, case studies focus on the distinctiveness of each case as argued by Loon and Berg in 2017. Case study research comprises of various elements which are used at different stages of research. The main elements of case study research involve selecting the problem that is selecting a case for the study, defining the case, drafting questions, data collection, analysis of data and reporting the findings or results. These elements will be elucidated in the following sections. Part 2 Doing case study research In this section, you will learn how the case study research is conducted. Designing a case study means building a model or an outline of your research right from selecting the case through field work and other stages until the researcher arrives at certain conclusion and present the findings. So here we will first consider who to study which means the unit under study. Now the question is what is a unit? A unit could be an individual, group, institution or community that we have chosen 
for the case study research. One thing has to be kept in mind that while sometimes we may say sample under study, this sample does not represent others. According to stake in 1995, case study research is not a sampling research. We do not study a case primarily to understand other cases. Therefore, the first and foremost prerequisite for a researcher conducting case study method is to define the unit under study and the case. Here a case study researcher has to be a biographer whose focus would be only on a segment of the life of an individual as pointed out by stake in 1995. However, there is no limit to the number of segments in a case that a case study researcher focuses on. Yin in 2003 calls such studies as multiple experiments. So this means there are two types of case studies, single and multiple case studies, but stake in 1995 claim that case studies can be conducted in three different ways. The first is the intrinsic case study wherein a researcher studies only an event in a single case. The second is instrumental case study wherein researcher studies a particular case to gain an insight into one single event. The third and last is the collective case study wherein a researcher engages with studying more than one case either simultaneously or one after the other to gain even more understanding of a particular event. Part 3 Methods of Data Collection In this section you will learn about various techniques through which data for case studies can be collected. The important techniques include case history, using archival data, documentation, interview, observation and participant observation. Archival data, the archival data includes the historical data through which researcher understands the background of the case through various archival sources such as autobiographical notes, calendars, letters, maps, pictures and videos. These archival data can be linked with other sources of information which provides a better understanding of the case under study. However, researcher has to be careful in selecting the archival data in the sense that he must ascertain the conditions under which these archival records were produced and whether those conditions meet the research questions. Documentation Documentation means any written statement either compiled by the subject under study or an official document that is linked to the case. Examples include medical record of a patient, performance report of a student, crime history of a person, legal status of a case, yearly official reports, any other note written by the subject and pictures or videos clicked during the event and so on. Some of these items may also be considered as the archival data depending upon the time when these evidences were produced. These items broadly 
display the personal views and sensitivity of those who produce them and this makes them significant to use as data in a case study through subjectivity and sensitivity of the data these documents provide an insight into the case under study which might not be possible through some other data collection technique as pointed out by berg in 2001 interview interview involves asking questions to get and recording answers it is one of the most effective ways of unfolding and exploring the events either in the lives of people or in some group community or organization it is no different than the interviews conducted in other research methods but it is different than the oral history interviews can be conducted either individually or in the groups the selection of the participants for the case study interview is based on the connection that they share with the case this means that the focus of the interview in case study method is directly on the topic under study then on the subjects being interviewed as pointed out by yin in 2003 the interviews in a case study method are always open ended scholars claim that though the information collected from the respondents during interview must be considered authentic but this information still needs to be corroborated by the other types of evidences before being accepted as valid as pointed out by yin in 1998 and also by stakes in 1 1995 observation observation is yet another important method of data collection in which the observer observes the field with or without any verbal conversation by being present in the setting without participating in the activities of the subjects in an observation the observer either observes the setting without intervention or observes with intervention observation without intervention means that the information is collected in a natural way this means that the observer refrains from entering into a conversation with the subjects during the observation on the other hand observation with intervention means that the observer during observation enters into a conversation with the subjects this means that the researcher has access to the field site where he observes the activities of subjects under study without participating in these activities and asks questions to gain an insight into the case or event as pointed out by berg in 2001 participant observation like in ethnographic research participation participant observation holds significance in case study research also this method of collecting information has its roots in anthropological studies where the focus was on cultural or social groups as pointed out by yin in 2003 in case studies participant observation is used to collect information 
from organizations, institutions, communities or groups. This entails the researchers active participation in the daily activities of the setting under study and keeping record of every occurrence that happens in the setting. The importance of using participant observation lies in the opportunity given to the observer to collect rich information through observation in natural setting as pointed out by Burgess in 1984. Participant observation can be carried out either overtly where the participants are aware of the fact that they are being observed or covertly where participants are unaware of the fact that they are being observed by the researcher as pointed out by Yin in 2003. However, there are certain rules or norms binding upon the researcher collecting the data through participation. These rules are called ethics. In the next section, you will learn what are these ethics and also about the ethical considerations. Part 4 Ethics in Case Study Research Ethics are the codes or principles which govern the interaction between the researcher and the people under study. In case study method, the researcher is supposed to follow certain principles while entering into field and interacting with the subjects for the collection of data. These are access to field site, consent, confidentiality and privacy. The first is the access to field size which actually depends on who to study and where to study. Sometimes the field is such a site for which a researcher requires permission formally from the officials. Prior knowledge of the field settings and the subjects will add to the chances of gaining access to the field. Besides, a researcher must be familiar with the rules and rituals of the people being studied which facilitate the entry into the field as pointed out by Loon and Berg in 2017. The second is the consent which means that the researcher has to ask for the consent of people being studied. This consent can be received either formally which requires the subjects to sign the consent form or informally which is given orally by the subjects. The third is confidentiality which implies that the researcher assures the informants that their information will be kept confidential to safeguard the identities of the informants, the researcher is under an obligation to refrain from writing the actual names of the informants. A suitable pseudonym is used thus replacing the actual names of the subjects. The fourth and the last is the privacy. During the course of data collection and after the data collection, the researcher is under an obligation not to make any information related to the informants public. An example of this would be a researcher 
asking questions to the subjects without any case at a public place which would cause harm to the subjects emotionally as well as socially within their social setting or if the data was not secured therefore it is binding upon the researcher to maintain the privacy part 5 analysis of the information collected analysis means engaging with the process of research though one may think that analysis means examining the data collected during the field work but the process of analysis starts since the time a researcher plans to conduct a research according to john brewer in 2000 analysis can be defined as the process of bringing order to the data organizing what is there into patterns categories and descriptive units there is a difference in the way scholars think analysis sh- should take place while some scholars especially ethnographers believe that the process of analysis starts right from the time a researcher plans to conduct a research study they think that the process of analysis starts when after the first visit to the field the researcher engages in writing short notes and tries to distinguish or find a link between the different types of data prior to going for a next visit to the field other believes that the process of analysis starts after the data is collected especially in quantitative research thus there are two broad ways of analysis they are analysis during data collection and analysis after data collection as pointed out by yin in 3 analysis during data collection entails writing descriptions or short notes based on observation and interviews for further processing analysis after data collection is a three fold process one arranging the data in a systematic order two identifying various themes emerging out of the data collected and three interpretation and presentation of the data part 6 presenting the findings one of the fundamental features of presenting the findings in case study research is to review the information collected in order to identify answers to the questions being investigated this is done through identifying various themes from the collected information which represent the findings of the research as pointed out by hancock and algozin in 2006 presentation of the findings or writing the case study report is the final stage in case study research presentation of the findings implies bringing out the result and findings and communicating it through publications this is the most challenging state of case study research as pointed out by yin in 2003 this is the phase where you reach to a certain conclusion and you get your research work published publishing your report is what makes it a challenging stage in the case study method according to matthews and ross 
in 2010 if you do not tell the world then obviously your work will remain unknown the style of writing the case study report should be a kind of biographical writing should follow the chronological order of events in a case and participants own language should be used in the preparation of the report to retain the integrity of their stories and meanings as pointed out by Jacker in 2009 while you present your findings contextualize the problem or case under study this will ensure better understanding of the method used however during the reporting of the findings of a case study utmost care has to be taken to follow research ethics in the sense that the case site as well as subjects identity has to be kept confidential using suitable pseudonyms as mentioned earlier part 7 summary in this module you learned about case study as a research approach and how case study research can be conducted there are different ways of doing case study research how these different ways differ from the other has been precisely illustrated in this module data for case studies can be collected using various techniques the module provides an account of the important techniques and how these techniques can be used for the collection of information all forms of research are guided by certain ethics which are the rules or the principles followed by researcher during and after the data collection process the module enlists and elucidates various ethical issues Thank you.